to Atomic Mass Transmissions Live Home Edition. It's always Home Editions. Um, we are painting our kingpin, continuing from last week. Um, so um, I'm not sure where we're going to go with this. I think we're going to finish up the skin. I may do pinstripes on the pants, not real sure. Stuff like that. So hopefully you've been painting along and you got your brushes ready and you can join in and uh, Let's have some fun painting for the next hour. Let's just hang out and see where the, where the art takes us. I'm just going to get ready. Um, we also got some hashtag painting protocol challenges to show off at the end of the show. So be ready for that because there's some good ones. They're awesome. All right, let's just switch it over to the mini cam. Boop. And there's our kingpin. So how is everybody doing? Hopefully you've been painting and exploring your paint and your art and your hobby when you get a chance. I did a little cleanup on uh, Mr. Fisk here in our off time between uh, last week and this week. And what I mean by cleanup is, um, you know, like I always say, I like to flip the miniature over, upside down to get the, um, get better angles on some stuff. So, I was able to flip him upside down, paint the underside of the coat, make sure the buttons were nice and clean, and tidy up the tie. Um, stuff that's a little trickier to reach on camera. So I'm going to take a little green in our base coat. And this, once again, this the, the, the flesh is just made up. I just got a couple colors. But I was talking about how we add a little red and a little green to our flesh tones. So that's what that's my next step. We, we put some nice red tones in our fisk. Now we gotta put in some of that green. It doesn't matter what, how dark or light you go, I still tend to add red and green tones to light and dark skin. And of course there's some, some exceptions. Like if you're going incredibly light, like say something like um, um, if you're painting uh, somebody albino, um, albinism is a very unique um, look. And um, I don't know, maybe sometime we'll get into that. Um, like how do you go about that? Because you, you tend to stay away from certain things and add in other things when you can albino skin so very very light skin and if you're going really really dark um, there's some really amazing um, wonderful examples of like extremely dark skin you kind of remove the green just a touch. I, I, I tend to not put as much green in that darker skin tone. But that's where you add like more purples into the shadows. So you still put warm color in it. Like I said, there's no wrong 
no wrong way. That is the wrong color for that spot. And there's no wrong way to paint. Human skin tones. I'm going to darken this up. I'm just going green and red together. Maybe a touch of burnt or raw umber. I want this in just the deepest shadows. Like right underneath that extremely cocked eyebrow. Underneath the nose. That little frowny lines. Accentuate those. Tim DeBoss, if you look at, um, look, like, I look at a lot of samples of uh, different skin tones and really try to break down, like, what is going on like subdermally and if you watch like fine art videos um, or go to a museum and look at the way like masters painted skin tones you'll see you'll see that green added um, into those Uh, Greg Webster um, so what I do is I usually pick like where my kind of base is and um, you know I've gone through the process a couple times on Twitch on our videos so you can go back and you can find those and watch the whole process uh, but the gist of it is I add red to the base color and I glaze it into the shadows. Then I add green into the base color, glaze it into the shadows. And then I do green and red together to make a really, really dark brown um, to go to the really, really deep areas. So behind the ear here, under the, under the eyebrows or the, the eye sockets, stuff like that. And this is my really, 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 really dark shadow. And of course, he's got the wrinkles on the back of his head. So he's lightly tucks those in. So I mentioned that we have hashtag painting protocol to go over today. The last three of the metallic choices. So we'll be talking about those, and hopefully you're getting your uh, web warriors and your spider foes painted up for this month's challenge, because we want to see all those. The metal one was great. There's a lot of entries. So it took me forever to choose because there were so many fun ones to look at. Um, but I finally chose. I finally picked my picked my favorites. Even at this point, like say I wanted, say I was just like. Um, I know Schick did like a tribute to Michael Clark Duncan on his King Pen. Like we could if if you feel like, well I want to darken this up, you can easily darken this up. I just want a little more shadow on those jowls.
He was working some shadows in there. Uh, Tim Novos, yeah, being partially colored by red green, right? You're gonna have a hard time seeing those. So that makes sense. But there's some really great washes out there that can replicate that red green. I make a lot of washes myself. And I, I put a lot of red and green in them. really divide that mouth line. Okay. Looks pretty good. I like that. A lot of contrast. A lot of contrast. So now I can go back and I can start adding in some highlights. I got some white and gray laying around here from last night. Uh, grab a little peach color. Let's start building some highlights. Now, of course, really reflective bald heads. I know all about those. It's going to like a nice reflection on that dome. I'm using really thin paints for this, right? Because uh, the thinner your paint you use, um, and you can also add mixing medium, but you kind of want to replicate that translucency of skin if you can. And you don't have to, right? You don't have to paint like this. Like, like I say, painting is painting is what you want out of it. You determine the goal and the destiny of the nature. You know, if you get home from work and you just want to spend an hour just throwing some washes and not really think about color, that's cool. That's cool. But if you want to go a little deeper, you want to understand a little bit more of philosophy, you know, that's fun. What's your hobby? There's no wrong way for you to hobby. Just doing little tiny highlights. I like really tiny highlights. Looks like Becca Marston asked if I can show my storm. I don't know, Josh, can I show my storm? Oh, we got lots of interesting questions. Okay, so Josh says yes. All right, so I'm going to get to my storm in a minute, but there's a great question. Um, where to go? Big Bad Andy, I have a lot of trouble with tops of bald heads and helmets. I can never quite get a smooth transition to a bright top on a rounded surface. All right, are you ready, folks? Let me get a drink. So, a rounded surface, right? So let's say this kingpin head. And you're imagining the light coming, coming down to the top. So there's two ways to go about this. Um, a fast trick I've I've learned is kind of built into the way we're already painting, right? With the zenithal primer, right? So smooth transitions are a lie. Mm, you don't have to paint smooth, but trust me, you can paint smooth without an airbrush. Um, one great trick I learned is paint the surface or paint the paint the element you want the brightest color you have, right? 
it's very easy to paint shadows. And the reason shadows are easy to paint is because, like, imagine here, the shadow here in the crevice. Your paint is going down into, like, uh, basically a pit, and then you can bring it up. So what you can do, if this was a helmet or whatever, you can bring the color up and stop just at the point where you want the brightest color. So this can be done on a shoulder pad, a helmet, any any round surface. A shield, if you had a shield like Captain America's shield and it was a flat surface, or even if it's not flat surface, you kind of, um, smooth has its place. That's that's my, uh, Frankie McShanky, I think, I think smooth has its place. Smooth and not smooth mixed together makes for contrast and contrast is interesting. Um, but say you have a sh uh, shield, uh, shoulder pad, helmet, whatever. You pick your light point. You pick the point where you want the light to be. And then you can uh, bring up with glazing or two brush blending or um, layer. Um, however you want. I prefer two brushing this sort of thing. And you just stop and leave a little bit of the lightest point. And then you just keep shadowing up, shadowing less and less. So then you instantly create that light spot without having to paint the light. The other way to do it is like on this kingpin, what I'm doing here, I painted a, I painted a head, I painted in the shadows, there's a base coat, there's all these colors, and now I'm taking this kind of paint. See this? This is mega thin, and you can put in some mixed medium or some um, any sort of uh, art medium. Um, into that paint and what this does is it breaks down the amount of paint particles you got it makes it even more translucent right because it's not as opaque now you're creating a, a more translucent paint and I thin that down and there's two ways to do this so I typically right now the way I paint is I paint like that little spot and I grab my brush and I dab around, breaking that surface. You can see that little translucent paint just starting to build up. And I'll do that two, three times and build up the highlight just ever so slightly, ever so gently, working it in there with incredibly translucent paint, right? Scrapjack, give cards. We already did. Where are you doing, my dude? So really translucent paint, once again, a lot of white. I put a little of the peach in there, you know, and I just kind of dab. And I grab that damp brush and I just kind of poke about the edge, feathering it away. And I'm just building in that highlight like that. The other way to do it is pie, right? So let's say you were painting a purple shoulder pad, right? So, or his head was purple and you wanted a bright highlight here on this rounded surface, you can paint. Now this does take two brush blending and you, you need to practice two brush blending to, to do this. But what I do is I paint three little triangles. One at a time, I'll put like a little triangle and I'll blend it out and then I'll rotate the miniature, little triangle, blend it out, rotate the miniature, blend, uh, little triangle, blend it out. Maybe four, maybe divide a circle by, by four. Um, I prefer three just because I'm super fast. Um, and then you glaze it once just to tone it back. So you go with like a really, really bright white or um, a really, really mega light blue. If you're doing blue, if you're doing, uh, if this was uh, purple, you do like a bright pink and you glaze it with like a little bit of purple to tone it back down. And it also blends that, uh, helps the blend. So, so there's a couple different ways to do a smooth transition on a rounded surface. I, I, don't, I don't like having one way to do anything. Um, I'm very much a, I like having lots of ways to do everything in my arsenal, right? because then I get to pick and choose what I feel is right for the project I'm working on. Um, and it makes for more 
more dynamic painting, right? Because like I said, uh, Frankie McShanky's where uh, smooth, trans tra uh, smooth is boring. Um, I, I like I, I like not smooth blending. I like smooth blending, but I love it the most when I put them b both on the same miniature, right? Because it's contrast, and your eye loves contrast, right? It's it's um, it's very important, and it's what you know. If you take any painting class with any professional miniature painter, they'll talk about contrast. Um, it, it just makes for a more interesting miniature. So I like non-smooth and smooth mix, mixed together. I like hot and cold on the same miniature. I like textured and non-textured. I like um, you know all the different. Can anybody name all the different types of con contrast? Because it's not just light and dark, right? There's light and dark. Um, there's hot and cold. There's smooth and not smooth. So all of these combine together to make a more interesting uh, paint job. So that highlight was a little bright, so I just grabbed some my peach and I went over it very with a very light, very translucent paint, toned it down, no big deal. No big deal. Oh, I promised my uh, storm, didn't I? I promised my storm. I got. I got. I got. I got. I got to put up my storm here a second. So did that make sense, um, Big Bad Andy, with the with the blending on a on a circle? All right. So last night, um, if you're checking out packs, um, Shake and I did a little paint jam together. We hung out and we painted together, and I painted a storm. Shake painted a storm. We both painted storm. In the upcoming X Men release. So I'll show it off here. So I didn't get very far in an hour. Um, but there she is. I got pretty much this. I'm going to pull back just a touch. There we go. So I got the skin done and I'm working on the white. I'm doing a white suit um, on my storm. Uh, Shik did the black suit uh, with gold trim. I think I'm gonna add black trim. Um, I'm, I'm pretty happy with her. Um, we're gonna, I, uh, what I wanna do is I got some blue here, of course on the lightning, so I blue in the eyes. Um, of course, the skin tone is very warm, and the the um, the cloth is still a little neutral. So I think I'm going to add a little warmth to the cloth to add more contrast to the blue, uh, and then I'll keep the hair more neutral um, and brighter white than the cloth. I'm keeping the cloth a little bit like this. Um, one trick: um, you don't need to. This is actually pretty sturdy. This isn't going to go anywhere. This isn't going to break. But it does wobble, so when you're painting it, you might want to hold it. Um, or what I was doing last night is I took a little bit of blue tack, poked it back there, and it made it a little bit easier for painting. Then I pop it off, and now I'm ready to play again. So just a little, just a little trick, a little tip. Somebody asked about Daredevil. What was that question about Daredevil? I saw it and I was already, I was talking about something else, so I got distracted. I think it was about the baton. 
Yeah, the storm looks great, right? We're very proud of uh, the storm. Um, if you joined in last night, we actually talked a little bit about the design and about the design process, about how, um, you know, there's a lot of, I come up with an idea and, and then it's like figuring out how to make it work. Um, um, so it's, it's a lot of fun. Um, a lot of discussion about like, well, we want this character to do this. And it's like, okay, well, how, how do you connect it to the base, right? Because, you know, you want an action-y pose, right? You want something, somebody doing, you know, Strange is a great example as well. I mean, I'm painting Strange, right? You want Strange, you want to show his mysticism, his magic ability and powers, right? So having him float, having him not touch the ground is very interesting and can convey his power. But how do you do that? So how do you connect it to the ground, right? It's, um... There's a lot of thought process on how to connect things to the ground because everything has to touch this base, right? You know, we can't just have a, a miniature floating, right? We don't have magnets that do that, um, that are easily um, consumer friendly for tabletop miniature wording. Um, so it's it's a lot of discussing how you how you put stuff on the ground. Um, and it's it's interesting. It's a, it's a lot of discussion with, um, the team, the plastics team at Asmodee, it's discussing with the engineers, um, Marco and Evan. Like I'm constantly like, well, what if I did this? And they're like, well, you need to thicken that up or you need to add something here. Um, so it's, it's, it's a lot of fun. And it's one of my favorite parts of, of the job is, and I'm actually looking over on, on my desk and I'm like, I'm like, that's interesting how we did that. Um, but you know, with Storm, it's how do you how do you how do you represent the goddess of Storm in miniature and really get that regal, powerful, I'm in control feel, right? But not have her touch the ground, right? Because she should she shouldn't touch the ground. She's above that. Um, so a lot of discussion on how much lightning, how to how to hide the lightning, how to make it more energetic and you know we're always learning and growing and pushing what we're comfortable with doing and what what we can do so it's very interesting she has two big keys one that plugs uh into her back the lightning like touches her back there and it runs out and touches the back of her um uh, knee there and that's what suspends her right and two nice big keys holds her up um and gives her that really majestic look. So there's a lot of design, a lot of discussion, and a lot of testing, right? We, we test stuff out. So, you know, we might have an idea and we'll, we'll try it out and we'll, um, you know, print it, see what it looks like. And maybe it works, maybe it doesn't work, you know? If it doesn't work, we, we start over. We, we go back to the drawing board and we figure it out. Um, which is what we all love doing. Like, I, I think everybody in the studio is very much a, let's figure it out. Oh, it didn't work. That's okay. We can still figure something out. Like, how do we make something work? I'm talking about those ears. Just a little touch. So the baton, two different designs, not really sure what you mean by two different designs are you just meaning the rope um because i think what happened is that rope uh is just bent it just got bent and that happens sometimes with ninjas like things get bent or bumped but that happens There's not actually two different ropes coming or anything like that. Yeah, 
Uh, the three six, yeah, it goes down to his face, down it goes down to his foot. The one down to his foot got bit. It's just a, it's just a, it just got bit. That's all it is. Uh, I need some black. questions we got. So this is where I would turn it upside down. So I come in from the side. So for the other eye, I typically flip the miniature upside down. Because I'm right handed, doesn't mean I'm correct handed. And that's true too, like we do have prototypes and there can be variances in that. I don't think anybody realizes how long, how long it takes to uh, make mentors. Uh, uh, Pagani and I were actually discussing earlier today um, we were in the office talking about some development stuff together and looking at some uh, uh, sculpts together. And um, we were talking about, um, like, we're coming up on the year release of Marvel Crisis Protocol, and we were kind of joking about, like, what we were working on a year ago this month before any, or, or last month, when, when nobody even knew Marvel Crisis Protocol existed, right? So before you even knew there was a core box, what were we working on? Like, that's the fun question. And the answer is, you haven't even seen what I was working on. Shig and I talked about that last night a little bit as well on the paint stream together. Was So I painted the eye black, and I'm going to go in with a nice off-white, as you know I love off-white. I'm going to do the same thing, and I'm going to leave just a little bit of the black shape. I'm using the side of the very tip of the brush. Once again, I'm going to flip the image over to paint that other eye. Because I know that's not great for you guys, but I'm painting the eye and I got to flip it over. That's how I do it. No, Lord Dusty, it's not a design thing. It's 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 literally just prototype versus not prototype. And I got a little bit more white on that eye than I wanted to when I flipped it upside down, so I'm gonna take a little bit of black. Go. 
I have a daredevil over here. I, I actually, um, we made it where you can connect the second baton into his right hand if you want, right? Um, so he's the, 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 the left baton is, is held and then you swing it around and then the right baton is like floating right below his hand so it looks like he's kind of throwing it. Um, I went for something a little different. I'm doing one where I actually cut the, the, the entire rope off um, just because I, I wanted something a little different. Um, so, and I'll paint one with the baton as well, the full rope. So you can, you can kind of play with that miniature a little bit. So now I'm going to paint the pupil. I have the worst brush in the world. So it's still going to be. Yeah, options are good, and we're exploring more and more how to get more and more options and stuff like that. Um, it's not always intuitive. And design affects those options, right? So, um, you know, we got to look at what the design is and how we're going to cut it uh, to sometimes discuss those options. Uh, Dallas, when you do eyes, do you use thicker paint or just take most of the paint off the brush? Whatever I try, I make a mess. Uh, my paint's not thinned. I'm using a black paint. I put it on a wet palette. I'll show you how much paint's going to be on my brush. That's, that's the paint I'm using. And I'm just barely going to touch this. Just like that. I like adding a little color to the lips. Just a little bit. Yeah, helmet, no helmet options are great. But once again, it's the design goes a lot into that, right? You know, the pose, how, how the head touches the shoulder, how the head works with the back, stuff like that. Does, this, does taking the helmet off add a bunch of hair uh, suddenly that has no place to really go um, in the design? So. There's, there's a lot to be considered. I think I'm pretty happy with this skin now. Feels pretty good. He looks suitably grumpy. The other thing I like to do with these grumpy villains is I'll take some red and I'll really thin it down. When will we get to see what you're working on in the court? When, you know what? I'll tell you when you see it. How's that? Let's put a little red. Incredibly thin, very translucent, right where the eyes meet. And then maybe just a little bit around there.
A little bit on the ears. You know what? The knuckles too, why not, right? Just ever so slightly. Just to give that bruiser feel to him, right? Just ever so slightly. Alright, what should I paint next on him? What should I paint next on him? We're running out of time. I told Josh I'm going to finish, and I was wrong, Josh. I was wrong. I got busy talking about other stuff. No one's asking me any more questions. I'm surprised. I'm very chatty. Giving away all the secrets. No one wants to know them. Jewelry. That's a great point. That's a great. Uh, what color should we do here? Uh, red ruby on his. Uh, you got me monologuing. Should we do a ruby on his uh, tie? Josh, what do you think? Ruby or sapphire ring? I'm gonna grab a drink while y'all vote. I'm just standing right here. My drink's right here. We're almost out of time, so. What do we want? Rubies? Sapphires? I'm just gonna pull a couple colors off. I need like a baby blue. I'm just over here picking out paints. I'm with ya. I'm still with ya. I'm still here. I'm still here. I'm still here. Sapphire. I like sapphire. What kind of sapphire? Um, which one's going to be easiest to see? I'm going to go ahead and do this one over here. I'm going to make sure we're in focus. Enough just to touch. So I'm gonna pick like a navy or like a true blue. Very medium blue, right? Primary blue. Uh, I got I got lots of paints there. Wham pop. I got lots of paints. Now this is one instance I am going to add pure white. Uh, grab a little bit of that. I'm going to do that top edge. I'm going to do a side edge. I'm going to fake a line in there. This line doesn't exist on the measure. I'm just going to kind of put it in there. Now I want a little bit darker blue. I'm going to put it down here. Just ever so slightly. I'm going to add some black to that dark blue. 
just ever so slightly glaze that bottom edge. So it's uh, happening. I'm imagining light coming from this way. Right? You can choose. I'm not really focusing on how light's actually working here. I'm just doing this for you. And it doesn't matter. It's not for competition, so no one's judging it. So what's going to happen is light comes from one side. And when light hits an edge of a gem, it breaks apart. So it's going to go run down this edge and this edge, and it's going to cut through the middle. And then you're going to get the shadow on the opposite side of it, right? So that's why I added some black to that blue and just putting a look, a dark shadow on this, this side, right? But the interesting thing that also happens is that's where your brightest highlight is. And typically, that's like a little tiny dot. Kind of take a breath. And then I breathe out when I hit it. And that's where your brightest highlight is because the light is escaping from right there. And you can put another super bright highlight right where the light's hitting. And you got like a little, a little gem. Just a sweet little sapphire. Now the other thing you can do is, so I painted that bright highlight along there. You can do a not so bright highlight on this side because it's facing the front of the miniature. Just along the edge of that square. Just to define it. That's all it's really doing. Have, uh, Lancelot Defunct, have you thought about ways to put out more car miniatures? Maybe a pack with a couple cars of anything. We, I think about terrain and different terrain all the time. Um, and have tons of ideas, right? But I only got so much time in a day. And I think, I think, I think we got some cool stuff coming up that y'all like. All right, switching over. Hello, everybody. So hopefully that was um, informative, and now you can think about how to add gems to your miniatures. Right? You got the light comes in from one side. It's very bright there, and it gets dark at the bottom, away from the light. So you want to darken that, but that's also where you want the brightest highlight. You want that light like escaping, right? Because the light hits, it disperses, it dissipates, and then shoots out. Think prisms, right? Prisms. 1970s albums. Um, let's do hashtag painting protocols. Dun, 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 dun. So the first one we got is um, by Izzy B. Sanchez, um, an Ultron. Um, this is a super great example of um, some non-metallic metal. Um, got some nice blue in that mid-tone there. Um, really black um, shadows. If you look on the torso, up in the upper left hand, um, chest piece there's like this little tiny dot of black and that is that's super right you want that super black right next to that super white um, and that's how you get that really extreme contrast put black right next to white and when I say black and white I mean super dark super light it doesn't have to actually be black and white um, and then you have so you have that blue mid-tone working really well contrast wise with the red glow so once again, you have hot and cold, you have light and dark, um, and then you have very smooth areas and then very um, not as smooth areas. So it works all very, very well together. Um, I thought that this was really great. And a great example of metals. The next one is, is Iron Man. Um, once again, 
the hashtag challenge was, or hashtag painting protocol challenge was uh, medals. And what other, what better way to show medals than uh, Tony Stark Iron Man? Um, we got some great golds on the face there, um, and this nice metallic red armor. Once again, that contrast is there. You got really, really dark shadows. It's really there um, on that uh, right shin on the lower part right below the knee. You got this incredibly dark shadow, incredibly bright highlight right next to it, working really well together. Plus you got the blue glow, so you have, once again, that hot and cold working together. Um, so this one was really good and we really liked this one as well. And then the final one is this Dr. Octopus. Um, I really like this one. Um, if you look right in the center where that red glow is, um, our artist was able to put that red glow reflecting in the metals, which is always really great. Uh, once again, you have this really nice highlight right across the top of his right, uh, his right upper tentacle. So you have these really uh, great blues and um, highlights really really dark shadows uh all all creating that contrast and that drama on the miniature and then if you look the base right so you have this like blue cool blue smooth metallic on dr octopus and then the base has the manhole cover and it's this nice red rusty so even though that's not part of the miniature it just adds that textural difference uh to the scene to tell that story and to make it all more visually interesting so I think that overall this was like a, another really great one. I really enjoyed checking it out. So remember, that's not the right one. Remember this month's hashtag painting protocol challenge is spider uh, foes and web warriors or spider family, however you want to say it. Um, so remember to share those on Instagram, um, your Miles, your Gwen, your Venom, your Dr. Octopus, your Green Goblin, whatever. Um, share those up there. We're going to take a look at and pick our um, pick um, some of our favorites toward the end of the month, and we'll show them off here on the stream, of course. Next week on Tuesday, Mr. Will Schick. Remember, check him out. It'll be one one p.m. Pacific Standard Time for um, his live stream. Um, I'm going to say like I say every week. I never remember what he's painting. Um, I don't even remember what I'm painting next week. But if you just join in, you're gonna love it. It's gonna we're gonna have a lot of fun, and um, Shook is gonna do an awesome job and teach you some cool stuff, and you know it'll be a lot of fun. So um, we got five minutes. I don't want I don't want to just keep painting. I I finished early, Josh. Let's go back to painting. Boop. Back to Kingpin. What can we work on? We got five minutes. How would I do pinstripes? How would I do pinstripes? So, I'm, I haven't decided if I'm actually going to paint pinstripes on this kingpin, but I've been contemplating. Um, and I think what I would do is I have a pretty light highlight on the pants. And I think what I do is actually pick a very dark blue I'm going to test this out. My water is too far away. I need my water.
don't know, what do you think? Let's put that. Can y'all see that? What do you think here? How are you feeling about that? I got a little quiet. I'm kind of in the tank. I'm doing it now. I'm, I'm, I'm kind of committed. What started out as one line turned into a 50. I'm going to stay out of the shadows. The shadows doesn't matter to me. Everybody's like, oh, you didn't paint the pinstripes in the shadows. They're like, yeah, you're right. I'm feeling it. I'm feeling it. Josh, what do you think of the pinstripes, my dude? So it's tough to do the other side, of course. So all I'm doing there, Big Red Andy, is I am really focused on uh, posture, actually, right now. Um, you can see this pinky. Is anchored. I'm I'm really anchored this pinky here. My elbows are on my table. I'm anchoring this, these thumbs together, and I'm starting at top and I'm just drawing down. Starting at top, drawing down. Starting at top, drawing down. So I'm trying to keep my. All the motion is right here, right. These are the only muscles I'm moving. Is this right there in the hand? And I'm breathing, right? That's the big thing people uh, need to realize is, it, is, is breathing. Posture and uh, ergonomics is super important when you're uh, painting anything. Um, but especially once you go into like freehand um, and small details, you want to breathe. You want to don't hold your breath. It's actually really bad to hold your breath. Um, I know people that say, I hold my breath when I paint the eyes. That's the, in my opinion, the worst thing you can do. Um, I don't know if you know this, but the body really likes to breathe. Um, the body really likes oxygen. Um, let me switch it over here. 
The body really likes to breathe, really likes oxygen. So let's talk about ergonomics. I know we're over time. Josh, we're gonna be over time a little bit. We're gonna talk about ergonomics because this is important. I want everybody to go away with this, right? Um, so breathing, you wanna take a breath. You wanna breathe out. When you go to paint the eyes, breathe out. So breathe, hold the brush, exhale, bring the brush in, do the eye. Don't hold your breath. The body goes into stress when you when you hold your breath, right? Because you, 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 want, you want oxygen is what I'm saying. So make sure you're breathing. Stay very, very calm. Be confident. Even if, even if you're not good at it, be confident. Just be like, this is what I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do. And if I mess it up, I mess it up. It's okay. Right? I messed up lots of miniatures. I got collections of miniatures over there that are not well painted. That's okay. Right? Because now I can go over there and I can look and be like, oh, yeah, I remember that time I tried that. It didn't work. I remember I couldn't do that? Man, now I can. That's awesome. So I love having those watermarks. Um, anchoring your elbows, anchoring your wrists, right? I use a standing desk, so that way my uh, diaphragm, my chest is up, my neck is up. I'm not putting any undue stress on the neck or lower back. I stand, I put my elbows on the table, I lock my wrists together, and I, and I paint, right? And then that lets me breathe. And, puts my body in a relaxed state instead of a stressful state. Um, so that helps out a lot. I can go on and on about this. I could talk for two hours about this, but I won't because it's time for me to go. So thanks for joining me. Remember, uh, Tuesday, 1 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, join in for Mr. William Schick. Um, and then next Thursday, join in and we'll see what I'm working on. Who knows what I'm working on. And um, when I finish up this kingpin, I'll post him up uh, on, um, I'll send it to Josh and Josh might share it or something. Everybody can see the pinstripes once I finish those. I'm, gl I'm glad I did it now. Like, I was like, yeah, maybe not. Now I'm like, yeah, I like it. So, it was a lot of fun. So, until next time, we'll talk to you later. And remember, be a hero. Bye, guys. Oh, you know what? Saturday, I'm painting. Join me. 8 p.m. Pacific Standard Time over on PAX. Thanks, for Josh. 8.15. I'm going to be painting a Spider-Man from start to finish. I'm going to build him and paint him in one hour. One hour. Join in. Bum, 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 bum. Spider-Man. Bum, 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 bum. Paint it in an hour. Bum, 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 bum. Can you do it? Bum, 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 bum. I don't know.